So at this point, you should be pretty familiar with uh, uh, installing, setting up R, uh, the R Studio environment, uh, knowing some basic functions, uh, have uh, some initial packages installed. Uh, before we actually get into text mining, there's a, a few more pre prerequisites that we need to get out of the way. Um, because our book, uh, uh, text mining with R, uh, relies a lot upon uh, the SIDA packages, the tidyverse SIDA packages, um, and tidy data principles, uh, it's going to be important for us to understand some uh, basic data wrangling, uh, data transformation functions within these that are going to be used pretty heavily in our text mining uh, with our book. Uh, so just to begin, uh, we need to install a set of packages. Um, and this time, instead of installing a single package, we're going to install a package that actually installs uh, a set of packages, the tidyverse set of packages. So uh, let's do our install packages function again. And we are going to be installing uh, the tidyverse set of packages. And uh, you can read more about these in the R for Data Science book. Uh, you probably actually read uh, uh, about a number of these in the introduction in Workflow Basics. So let's go ahead and install our Tidyverse set of packages. We're going to run this. Again, we can highlight it and run. We can do uh, Command or Control and Enter and run that line. Uh, we can copy and paste it down here into the console, or we could just type it directly into the console. I'm going to paste it down here. I'm going to install the set of packages. There we go. So as you can see, it's installing now. And let's go to our packages. All right. There we go. So we've installed a number of tools. Uh, dplyr is one of those tools. Uh, ggplot is another package that's involved in these. I think uh, it includes stringer, which is another package for uh, manipulating uh, strings and text-based data. Uh, so now we have a whole set of packages. I think it goes into detail, uh, the suite of packages that are installed through the tidyverse. There we go, it's under prerequisites. And tidyverse, there we go. There we go. So ggplot, dplyr, stringer, tidyr, reader for reading in data. So that's the set of packages we just installed. And let's go ahead and load all of those packages because we're going to need them. So again, to load packages to make sure they're actually, uh, uh, you can use the functions that are within those packages. We're going to say library again. This time, remember, we don't need to use the quotes. Tidyverse is going to pop up for us. And let's go ahead and load those packages. All right, excellent. There we go. So we can see it loaded ggplot, tibble, tidyr, reader, etc., etc., etc. In addition to these uh, Tidyverse packages down here that we just installed, we're also going to install some uh, packages that contain data sets that we're going to use just to play around with and get some practice with some of the functions that we're going to be learning from these set of packages. Uh, one package in particular we're going to be using a lot of uh, functions from is the dplyr package. Uh, so let's go back to our book here. And we're going to go ahead and install these packages as well. And these uh, contain data sets that we're going to be using to uh, manipulate. I'm just going to actually just copy this, then paste it here. And you can see this is kind of interesting uh, to pay attention to. So remember that combined function from lesson one? We can actually use that inside of another function. So instead of saying install packages uh, New York City Flights 13, install packages Gapminder. Uh, by combining these, this just uh, allows us to write one single line of code to install three different packages instead of writing three separate lines of code. So let's go ahead and install those. There we go. And you can see that it installed them. Let's go check just to make sure they're there. Scrolling down, alphabetical order here. Oh no, P, oops, they're past it. There we go. Uh, NYC flights data. Let's explore that just a little bit to see. All right, documentation package. All right, and I think these are the variables that are included in this uh, data set.
All right, just to be sure though, let's uh, go ahead and load the NYC flights data. So again, we're gonna call it the library. Uh, we're gonna be using that function a lot throughout this course. And we're gonna go ahead and load the NYC flights 13 data. There it is, you don't have to type it all. All right, uh, command enter, and it should be loaded now. All right. So as you can see here, uh, I've pulled up the uh, uh, help tab for uh, the flights NYC data. Um, and you can see it has four different data sets here. Uh, it includes the airlines data set, which uh, is uh, information about the airline names, airports, which contains airport metadata, uh, flight information, planes, and weather. Uh, so I'm just kind of curious. I'm going to pull up the uh, airlines data. So airlines, there we go. And that is just a table here that has uh, two columns and it has uh, 16 airlines there. Um, if we wanted to view this, we can use the view function too. So view airlines, there we go. And then we could view it just like we would in a spreadsheet form. Right. Uh, let's also load the flights data and take a look at that. There we go. You can see when we uh, type in flights, it already knows that it's a data frame, it's a data set. In this case, it's a uh, what the tidyverse calls a tibble, which is a tidy table. So let's go ahead and load that. Take a look at it at least. Um, so we can see this contains a ton of information, uh, 336,000 rows. Uh, with 19 variables. Um, some of the variables not uh, shown in this little output right here are, uh, let's see, hour, minute, time, hour, distance, uh, origin of the flight, uh, tail number, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you'll notice that we called up this data uh, to take a look at it. Uh, again, let's view the flights data. We can view it in a spreadsheet form, and then we can actually see all of the columns. And if we wanted to, we could scroll all the way down to the very end. Uh, we're not going to do that, though. Um, so we can see it that way. You'll notice, though, uh, we haven't uh, saved these data sets into our environment at this point. So we've pulled them up. They exist within the package. We're taking a look at what they are, uh, but we haven't saved them as something we can actually manipulate later. We are going to focus uh, now on five kind of core functions from the dplyr package uh, that we're going to be using uh, quite a bit uh, throughout the course. Uh, and these functions are filter, range, select, mutate, summarize, and uh, we're also going to be using grouped by uh, in conjunction with some of these. Uh, so filter is basically going through and picking rows uh, from that large data set that we want to use uh, specifically. So helping us narrow down that data set uh, based on values of certain observations. So for example, where we had that uh, 360 plus thousand uh, uh, records of flight information, we might want to filter that and narrow it down by a given time frame. So we're only looking at flight information from uh, November of 2013, for example. Arrange is just basically doing some house cleaning so we can rearrange the rows in the order that we want them. Uh, select is similar to filter, um, but instead we will be filtering out by the uh, columns, by the variables, instead of the rows. So for example, maybe we only wanted in our data set that we're going to manipulate uh, just the flight information, like the flight number, the time, and uh, destination. Uh, so that helps narrow down and, and simplify the data set with that we'd be manipulating. Uh, we can also create new variables with mutate uh, and then summarize is something we're going to be using a lot as well. All right, so let's get some practice with uh, these five key functions. First off, I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, new comment in here. So five key dplyr functions. All right. There we go. And just so I have it for my outline, so I can easily really quick uh, flip back and forth between my different sections of code. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it a little outline. There we go. All right, so let's focus on filter first. So like I said before, filter allows us to go ahead and uh, 
remove a number of observations uh, that we really aren't interested in to just simplify our data set. Uh, so let's uh, use the example that uh, is provided uh, here in the R for Data Science book. I'm going to actually just go ahead and copy this to make my life a little easier. All right, so we can see we've got filter right there. Uh, now this is kind of important. So the first uh, argument within this function, so a function, uh, let me just do some quick review. So let's go over to the filter function. All right, there we go. So we are talking about dplyr filter. There we go. So that contains a number of arguments, uh, but basically the first one, as mentioned in the chapter five book, uh, the first argument to this function, think of arguments as like maybe a set of options uh, for uh, uh, using that function. Our first argument is always going to be the data set that we're interested in. In this case, we're going to be looking at the flights data. Um, so we're going to say uh, we want to filter some data. Uh, specifically, we want to filter the flights data. And here's how we want to filter it. Uh, we only want the flights that took place in the first month of the year, so January, and we only want the flights uh, that took place on the very first day of the year. So we want to filter out everything else and only keep the flights that happen to be on January 1st. So let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see, uh, our flights now for month and day of the year are all on January 1st, uh, but this is kind of key to pay attention to. So now we've narrowed our data set down quite a bit. Uh, we used to have 336,000 rows, now we only have 842 rows. All right, so as you can see, uh, we've gone ahead and we filtered down, we narrowed down our data set to just those flights that took place on January 1st. Uh, but you'll notice again, we haven't stored anything yet as an object that we might wanna use uh, later on. Uh, so all we've done is we've run this function on this flights data, uh, telling it to narrow down some specific variables. So wherever there's a one for the variable month, uh, keep those, and wherever there's a one for the variable day, keep those. Uh, so what we want to do next, though, is actually just store this to uh, be able to call it up later. So let's go ahead and we'll call it, I think the book calls it, what do they call it? January 1st, so let's call it January 1, Jan 1, and we're going to go ahead and copy this, and we're going to run this again, except this time when we run it, we're going to store it as an object, so we can just call it up later really easily. We're going to run that, and now you can see up here, it is a table, it's a data frame, uh, it has 19 variables, uh, and uh, 842 observations rows. And you'll notice this is something new, so we haven't had this before, but there's a new icon that comes up. When it recognizes that it's a data set or a data frame, you'll see this little icon here, and you can click on that, and it's going to pull up your uh, data set. Uh, another way to pull that up, of course, is saying view January 1, and it'll show it that way too. So you can point and click, or you can go ahead and type. Um, I'm just going to goof around just a little bit. Let's say I wanted to filter a little bit differently. Let's say uh, I don't want January 1st flights. Let's say uh, I want, uh, let's see, flights that took place on Christmas Day. So I'm going to call it December 25th, where the month is 12, and the day is 25. Um, one thing to pay attention to in R is you'll see this double equal sign. Uh, that's to differentiate it from the assignment operator. So you recall that we can assign things to variables using this arrow, but we could also just use an equal sign so as to avoid that confusion. All right, so December 25th, and let's uh, narrow it down even one more criteria. Let's say, hmm, I want uh, flights on December 25th. Um, from American Airlines carrier. So I'm going to say carrier equals AA. All right, and let's see, there we go. So we can see, let's pull that up now. Uh, view 
December 25th flights. I should. So uh, let's take a look at that. All right. So uh, we filtered out month, December 25th. Yep, that's correct. And carrier only flights that are on December 25th that were by American Airlines. So we narrowed that down quite a bit. So that is our filter function. I'm not going to demonstrate these in the uh, R Studio, but I uh, just want to make you aware. So there's a mention of the uh, difference between uh, using the double equal sign and the single equal sign in the error that we will get. Um, it also talks about some other things. Uh, when we did, when we looked and filtered by the flights for uh, December and day 25, uh, we were saying looking for flights that uh, met all of those conditions, uh, but we may want to have different conditions. So for example, we might want to look for flights that uh, were in either the month of December or uh, were on day 25. Uh, and he's going to walk us through, you can practice this on your own, but uh, he'll show you some operators that you can use uh, for doing that. So for example, uh, with this one, we could filter it for flights that only took place uh, either in the month of November or the month of December. Uh, there's another one here for filtering, etc., etc. So next, we're going to take a look at the arrange function. Uh, this is basically just a function for uh, reordering uh, uh, the order of uh, your rows uh, by particular column values. So for example, uh, let's take arrange here and take this over to our studio paste that in. I've already got it pasted there. Again, that's saying uh, we want to arrange the rows and the data we want to use is flights. Uh, data is always going to be the first argument in your function. And we're saying we want to arrange it by year and then month and then day. So it's in chronological order. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. So it's going to arrange it by uh, all of the January flights first on the first day uh, and then uh, 2013. Um, so let's also take a look at, let's say we wanted to look at a variable and look at our data um, and uh, look at it from uh, reverse uh, dis, uh, in descending order basically. We'll do the same thing except this time we're saying we want to arrange the rows, uh, we want to use our flights data, and we want it in descending order based on the uh, delay, flight delay variable. So let's run that, and then you can see delays, it's going in decreased order there. So now we can see that uh, month and day is all jumbled up, but it's in order from descending order by uh, uh, the time of delay. Next up is uh, select, which is uh, very similar to filtering, except instead of uh, uh, picking out the rows that we want, we're just going to narrow it down by the columns that we want. Um, so, for example, let's look at this one right here. Uh, we're going to use the select function again. Uh, we're saying uh, call up the flights data. That's the data we want to be using. Uh, and we only want three uh, variables, three columns. We only want the year, month, and day of the flights. Let's go ahead and run that code just for practice. All right, so this is the select function. There we go. So now you can see we've narrowed down our table over here. And uh, just for practice sake, let's assign this. So let's call it uh, 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 flight dates. There we go. So we can save that and use it later. So as you can see, it's a data frame right here. It's a table. Um, it has three variables, three columns, and it has a well, of course, 336 observations because we didn't narrow those down at all. And we can go ahead and take a look at that. So you can see we just have those uh, three columns, which is identical down here. Next, we're going to look at the mutate uh, function, which allows us to create new variables, essentially. Uh, so we're going to work through this example right here. And uh, this first part of the example, all we're doing is uh, creating a a uh, new data set, uh, a flights data set that's a bit smaller and more manageable to work with. Uh, so we're going to use that select function again that we used just previously. And we're going to say, let's use our flights data. Remember, the uh, data always comes first that we want to use and manipulate. Uh, we're going to say, uh, only give us the columns uh, year through day. So that's going to include year, month, day. 
Uh, also include columns that end with delay. So that's going to include departure delay, arrival delay. And then we also want to include uh, the distance variable and the airtime variable. So I'm just going to select that and go over to my R code. All right, I'm going to say I'm learning the new mutate function. Paste that in. All right, and let's run this. Um, and you can see in the code here, uh, what they did was they created new lines for each of these, and then they closed out the end of the function. Uh, that way we can see all the different things we're selecting. So it's a way to make it a little bit more readable. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, and I just want to take a look at it really quick. So I'm going to view again. Uh, flights small. And let's check that out. There we go. That looks right. Year, month, day departure delay, arrival delay, distance, and air time. Excellent. So we've uh, created our, our, we've created a smaller data set to work with, uh, and now we're going to add some new variables to this. Um, so we're going to use the mutate function to create some new variables. We're going to tell it, instead of using the flights data, which we used before, uh, we just want that smaller data set that we created. So we're going to get the flights smaller data set and we're going to create two new variables, one called gain and one called speed. Um, and that gain variable is actually going to be uh, the difference between the departure delay and the arrival delay. So you can see here, uh, we have the departure delay and the arrival delay, the difference of uh, negative nine there, and then the speed as well. So let's go ahead and run both of those. All right. Right, excellent. So you can see the two new variables that we created, gain and speed. Uh, so next we're going to be looking at two final functions to wrap up lesson two. Uh, this is the summarize function uh, and the group by function. And the summarize function basically allows us to create a uh, numerical summary of data we might be interested in. Uh, so for example, uh, in this case we are looking at our flights data and what we want to do is just create a uh, single uh, uh, single summary of our departure delays and basically what we really want is just the mean of all our departure delays and we're going to call this uh, column called delay uh, and then this final argument here in this function is basically saying uh, if there's any uh, missing values just remove those observations so we're just going to get rid of those altogether uh, so let's go ahead and add this to our, our script. All right. I'm going to create a new comment here saying I'm working with a summarize function. There we go. Paste this in. All right, and let's run this. And there we go. Uh, so the average departure delay, I, I think this is in minutes. Uh, I could be mistaken, but I think this is in minutes. The average departure delay was uh, 12 uh, minutes, 12.6 uh, minutes. So uh, as noted in the uh, text here, summarize by itself is not especially useful unless we use the group by function. Uh, and the group by function allows us to uh, group some of the observations based on a given condition. So we might want to find the mean for flight delays for uh, each individual month and then be able to compare those and say do we see more flight delays around uh, the month of December than we do in July etc etc uh, so let's work through this example right here I'm gonna go ahead and copy this again take it over to my RStudio script paste it in there all right so uh, we've taken our flights data uh, and we're gonna group it by uh, year, month, and day uh, combined to create one group. So basically we're gonna have, uh, uh, for all 365 days of the year, uh, we're gonna calculate uh, down here the means and departure delay for uh, each day of the year across all the airlines. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you're gonna notice up here, we've got a new object in here. Uh, we called it uh, grouped by day. Uh, this is basically just taking the flights data and it's adding a grouping element to it. Um, so you can see the flights data really hasn't remained unchanged except for now it's, uh, uh, there's some sort of metadata behind it that says uh, these are the ways we want to group it. So 
we still have 336,000 observations, we still have the 19 variables, uh, but now we're going to summarize those. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to summarize our data by day. Uh, that's the name of the new data frame that we created. Uh, and we're going to say what we want to do is um, uh, we're going to create that new column delay. All right. And we're going to take the mean departure delay for each of those groupings. And again, uh, if there are any missing uh, values, we're going to tell it to just uh, remove those and throw those out. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, there we go. All right, so now across uh, all airlines for uh, January 1st, 2013, the average delay was uh, 11.5 minutes. Um, and then January 2nd, the average delay was 13 minutes. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and see what would happen though if we grouped it a little bit differently. So let's do it, let's group it by month instead. All right, uh, by month. And we're still gonna keep this the same, but we're gonna get rid of day. We just wanna group it by year and month. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's summarize it again. All right, and we're taking our by month object that we created, and we still want the delay. We want the mean uh, departure delay. Again, we're gonna throw out any missing variables, and let's take a look at that. Let's run that. There we go. So now we have average de uh, departure delays for each month of 2013. Uh, and let's go ahead and uh, let's see. All right, so uh, I've taken that uh, uh, summary of the uh, delays by month, and I've actually just gone ahead and I'm going to store it actually as a uh, its own distinct object. So there it is up here, delay by month. Uh, this is something that has three variables, three columns, uh, 12 observations, one for each month. Uh, and right now I'm just going to go ahead and use my arrange function again. Uh, because I want to take that delay by month data and I want to order it by uh, the time of delay. So I can do it that way and then I can see that uh, uh, the fewest average delay was in the month of November and the largest average delay was in uh, the month of uh, uh, July there. So that's kind of interesting. It looks like uh, biggest delays are typically on average around the holidays. Um, and then Conversely, we can also do uh, range it uh, by descending order. So let's go back where we had our descending right there. So you can see it right there. So descending. Let's make sure I did that right. Yep, there we go. All right, now it's going to order it from. Uh, uh, largest to uh, smallest delays. All right, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna learn one final thing and kind of put all of this together that we've learned. All these different dplyr functions for uh, transforming and manipulating data. Uh, and one of the things that's gonna save us time down the road and something you're probably going to see quite a bit of in the uh, text mining with R book uh, is this uh, thing called a uh, pipe operator. Um, so what this allows us to do uh, with the tidyverse uh, uh, package of functions is it allows us to perform multiple commands and functions without having to write lines and lines of code. Uh, so for example, let me walk you through this one right here. So what we've got going on is uh, we're going to create this new data frame, uh, new data set, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our flights data and we're going to do multiple steps to it. So the first thing we're going to do to it is we are going to group uh, our data uh, by destination of the flights. So we're going to say uh, when we summarize this data, we want to create summaries of the data based on the uh, airport destination. So all the Detroit flights we're going to summarize together, all the Atlanta flights we're going to summarize together. And then here are the key uh, summary statistics that we want from our data. Uh, we want to create a new variable, it's called count, and this is going to be simply just the number of flights uh, that, uh, for each of those uh, airports. We also want the uh, uh, 
uh, average distance of the flight. Uh, and then finally, we want the average delay of the flight. And then one final thing we're going to do to our data is we're going to filter out some of the observations. We're going to filter out some of the flights. And we're going to say uh, only keep the flights uh, where the number of flights uh, for a given airport is greater than 20. And uh, we want to exclude uh, the destination uh, HML. What is that for? Uh, Oh, Honolulu, of course. Uh, so we're removing some uh, noisy data points there. Let's go ahead and copy that. And we're going to paste it into our script. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And we should see a new object pop up in our environment here. All right, there we go. Here's our delays. Uh, excellent. So we know this is a data frame. Uh, it has four uh, variables, uh, so those should be, um, where are they? Uh, there we have, we have count, uh, uh, distance, delay, and destination. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we can click view, type it in here, or we could just go ahead and click. So there we go, yeah. So I'm kind of curious, uh, DTW, I'm from Michigan. Uh, 9,384 flights there. Uh, average distance for the flights was about 500 miles. I'm assuming that's miles. Uh, and then the average delay was five minutes. Uh, and if we want to view the data, remember we had the arrange function, so we could like view it down here in the console, uh, but usually it's just quicker to go in here and sort. Um, so the average largest delay was uh, airport CAE. I, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, what I could do though is um, hold on, let's call up the, do, 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 do. all right, yeah, so uh, let's go to our NYC flights package, uh, and there it is, airports, that's going to contain the information for the airports, so let's go ahead and view that again, view, airports, and I'm kind of curious, what is CAE? Hmm. A, B, C, scroll, scroll, scroll. I'm sure there's a more efficient way to do this. Uh, there we go. Columbia Metropolitan Airport. Interesting. So uh, that's going to go ahead and wrap up our lesson two. So uh, the main purpose of this uh, lesson was to essentially get us oriented to uh, the dplyr package and the dplyr set of functions for doing some basic manipulation of data. Uh, because these are things, uh, functions that we're going to be using in our text mining with our uh, uh, textbook and uh, throughout the unit.